Hey guys, I've been asked to uh, do a uh, video on my um, uh, the way I use charcoal, my charcoal technique. Uh, it's pretty standard. It's it's nothing unique necessarily with myself. I might have a move or two that's different um, than than maybe others, uh, but it's it's pretty much a traditional approach here. And I'm working on this brown stock, uh, and I'm going to be using this charcoal stick. Um, and then uh, some white a little bit later as I move on. But I'm going to basically draw a pug, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. And so I, this is basically the, the dimension of my page, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, and just sort of start this um, this pug, and I'm going to sort of work with uh, just sort of establishing the, um, the, the just the shapes that exist in this pug. And I'm just going to start working through it, and I'll talk with you as I do it. Right now, all I'm trying to do is just establish the angles of what this pug, his shapes, and his initial shape is. And that's a pretty good start. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to come in here and draw some of the inside shapes. And this feels pretty good so far, but I'm going to simplify what I see. And all of this is a big simplification of this mass here. And um, Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to establish this eye. I'm going to remember that this eye is really, whoops, is really round. I'm going to use a little bit of exaggeration as well. Uh, exaggeration is a pretty cool tool. Uh, I use it when I have to. But most of this will be fairly representational, meaning representing what I see and, and representing life, normal life, not too much caricature. But I do use exaggeration and a slight bit caricature to really um, communicate. So at this point, all the initial moves are in here. I'm drawing with the side of my of my past I'm not pastel the side of my charcoal and I just want to get these darks in here and use the side of my finger and sort of blur and and smear this and smudge this in a little bit but this feels pretty good everything is basically there um, I'm going to come up here and work my way up towards this. I'm working my way up towards the ear. And another thing I'm doing is I, uh, I, I did this on a video earlier. It's called blind contour, not really. And what it is is every time uh, my, I'm looking at the subject, and by the way, I'm drawing this pug off of my monitor. And basically a blind contour drawing, we learned this in art school, is um, you, you look at the subject and you move your eye and you trace the subject with your eye. And every time you move your eye, you move your hand. And the cool thing about it is it's pretty accurate. It's what you're, as you as you as you track the subject, you move your eye, you move your pencil, or you move your brush, or whatever, and you really do trace the the subject with your eye. And the difference between what I do with a blind contour, not really, is I'm not basically a blind contour is where you never look at your paper, and at the end it's all chaotic, like you have an eye over here and a nose over here, and you don't look at your paper at all, and and it's really not really that helpful but maybe it helps your eye hand coordination.
but it's really not that helpful because it just looks like Picasso did it. But what I did, I think like what the way I use it is I use it where I do a line and then I look and see where I am and then I do another line. So it's it's really cool because for me I draw what I know that I saw as opposed to looking at the subject, making an observation and then coming over and staring at your paper and making a, making your lines. What I'm doing and the way it helps me is I'm drawing and I'm and I'm moving my eye and I move my my pencil or my brush and it it really does work for me. It's really pretty cool. So you might want to try it. You might have to work on getting your eye hand coordination moving, but it's the only way I draw, so it just works for me, but I do think it's a it's beyond just preference or pr I think it's really uh uh it can be a principle as opposed to just like a preference. Does that make sense? So at this point, I have this thing pretty well mapped out. I have this weird line happening in here, so that's okay. But the other thing I want to do real quick is I want to draw this uh, nose in here. But you can see with just these lines, I've sort of captured this, this cool looking pug, right? So that's pretty much it. And now the move I want to do is I want to maybe strengthen some of these lines, some of these darks, right? So I'm going to get in here and really strengthen some of these. I'm going to actually get rid of that highlight there. Really put some nice strong darks in there. I also want to finish this video within 15 minutes, so I have to really move here. But I'm just filling in this mass with this this charcoal. Just getting my darks in, laying in my darks, and um, and I'll come back in and lay in the light later. And I'm squinting my eyes as I look at the subject, as I look at this pug as well, because uh, it allows me to uh, edit and simplify, and, and it simplifies what I'm looking at. So that's another thing I'm doing. A lot of artists that have been doing this for a long time uh, do that. It's, it's not anything unique in particular with me, but it has helped me. So I'm squinting my eyes as I look so that I can see a simplified version and I'm not putting in all this unnecessary detail. So at this point this feels pretty good. Now what I what I really want to do as well is I want to um, sort of indicate um, this um, the I want to I want to I want to do a move with something called um, something called a, a webral a webral wipe and this is pretty much what it is and I go ahead and I'll, I'll talk about this in the in the writing that I do as well. But this is called a Webral wipe, and it was used back in the day of of the printing press. Uh, I think they're still around. Webral, W-E-B-R-I-L. And I want to what I want to do is I want to throw in the light effect now and put in the shadow mass. And I'm going to grab a piece of tracing paper, and I'm going to grab this black chalk, this black uh, charcoal. I'm going to create like uh, some magic dust if you will, some fairy dust or some charcoal dust and I want to get it on this Webral white because there's a few different ways to throw this to throw this in, you know. Um, you can use your finger but what I but it gives you like a little bit of a streakiness to it so what I like to do is create this powdery pile and I've got all this now on my on my Webral wipe and it's really cool and now I'm going to throw in uh, and 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 render uh, sort of the the uh, the shadow mass, and um, it's going to allow me a nice clean swath. I like it, it's pretty cool. So, just watch. But it allows for a really quick definition of shadow.
I want to remember that this cheek and all of this is sort of round. And what I can do is, I'm going to put this all in here. It also helps me to simplify what I'm doing. But if you squint your eyes and look at this, this thing looks kind of cool, you know. Um, I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to sort of darken and strengthen up a few more lines and uh, see if I can't throw in the light with a white and sort of finish this thing out. Again, I want to treat all of this nose just as a simple, simple mass. Again, I'm using the side of the stick. And all of this is really simple and just simple in the shadow mass. But you can see it's actually kind of graphic. Not a lot of detail. I'm not worried about anything other than just really trying to nail down these simple shapes that are happening in Mr. Pug here. I'm going to darken this eye. It's cool. Maybe I want to darken this here just a tad. a few graphic lines. Again, this is all blind contour strokes that I'm doing. Got this cool looking little um, collar happening here. I'm just going to treat it simple. But I'm going to leave everything in the shadow mass here. Just let it be. I can add some, a few strokes of of hairs and, 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 and round masses or little shapes that are happening and being pressed out. But I can let these things be really simple. Let your shadows be simple and mysterious. You don't want to draw a bunch of attention to the shadows and put a lot of reflected light in there because the main subject, everything that's really cool, any of the story is basically happening in the light. And that's what this image is really more about as opposed to let me show you everything I know in the shadow so it's really a matter of keeping it really simple so at this point another little move I can do is um, I'm just going to use my uh, happy little brush here and brush away a few little things but um, I'm going to come in here and I can sort of erase out and with this uh, powerhouse eraser which is kind of cool and I can sort of really erase down to the stock and um, it's kind of a cool little move because uh, it, uh, it allows me to sort of just, uh, you know, work this thing back and clean up some areas. You can see that it's, it's almost all there just as it is, as this exists, you know. So... Anytime you can do a few moves and have something be pretty close and pretty accurate, all, all the better, you know. Again, I'm squinting my eyes. This is all round here. I want to really feel this is going around. But I think I'm ready to add the light and we'll see what we have. But at this point, I think it feels pretty good. 
just take one quick look. Yeah, that looks cool. Next thing I'm going to do is just add in some of my white here. And I'm going to take this stick and just sort of come in here and just sort of add in some of this, this light that's happening. And I'm pressing, um, I'm not pressing too hard, but I want to make sure that all of this is sort of in the light. And all of this is catching light, even though it's sort of like grayed out. This is this is all a plane, and it's catching it's catching light. And as I press harder, I get brighter brights. But I can let some of the bag show through too. Again, I'm holding this thing. Fairly, fairly um, awkward in an awkward way. I'm just sort of using this gently here. I do want to blur this out, this eye here, a little bit. Put some of this white in here, and I just want to sort of blend it with my hand a little bit. Can come in here, and we can hit some highlight on this nose. A not so much highlight, but just I'm gonna paint in some light, basically. That's really what I want to do. So I'm using this white to do that. It's feeling pretty good so far. So I can come over here and really hit this in underneath here. I definitely want to hit it, hit it in right here where it goes up. I haven't put any highlights in yet. I'm still trying to work this thing up with where, it's, where it is. feeling pretty good so I might just just have this little bit of this uh, transition here where this shadow the light is just just rolling into the shadow I might soften that up just a tad where these plane changes start happening just to soften this just a tad you know but uh, I think I'm gonna hit a little nice hot highlight on this part of this um, part of the leash But I am going to come back in here and um, just want to move, I want to really make this where it's still a lot in the light and I can strengthen some lights. But right now I'm just sort of painting this plane in with my finger. That That's the idea. This whole plane is facing the light. Um, so then I can come back in and I can hit some brighter, brighter little strokes to sort of accent some of these, these, these areas here and go press in a little bit harder and really get in there and just work this a little bit more call out some of these areas here going underneath here but now I can do some little bit of highlights happening in here Come in here, really make that strong. Maybe one more little shot. I can get in here and just sort of play this up just a tad. Even this one here. But it's feeling good right now. I like the way it's feeling. So this is essentially, it's, it's basically done. 
I can keep working this thing, but you get the idea, right? You really can see it come together. I can come back in here and strengthen some of these things and keep working it. And one, of the, one question that gets thrown around a lot is, well, how do you know when you're finally done? And I think it boils down to the idea that um, you know you're done when you've achieved what you were going after. And, and, and th what you're going after is the essence. What is the essence of this piece? It's all about this pug. And you put in just enough detail so that you've captured the essence and the powerful finish. It's done, but you've captured the essence. And any, other, any more details are going to really subtract from uh, the overall piece. So you don't want to just keep adding in details. It's like you just put in just enough details until you say, that captures it. It's done. So that's usually the idea. It's just details can steal from the overall image of what is this piece about. And so you work right up to just the very end of it and you say, I put in just enough. It captures exactly what I'm going after. I've, I've nailed the essence of this piece. This piece is about this pug. And I don't need to say anything else or add anything more into it. So at this point, this looks and feels pretty cool. Okay, I might knock this down a little bit since it's gray. But now a few other things that I might do is add a few little stray things and a few little nice little strokes here. Boom, boom. I like playing a few things up and really messing around and being maybe a little tad funny with uh, some of these cool looking little things. Oh, and then I got to add this little thing over here. But that's basically it. Okay, I might strengthen up a few more lines like this. Might really get this moving around here. Really feeling that round. But that's it. All right. All right. Bye bye. Now, as always, if this video has helped you, spread it around with your friends, share it on your social media, things like that. All right, everyone. So if you like the video, you want to learn more, you want to improve as an artist, highly recommend clicking over to Schoolism, signing up for the newsletter, because in this newsletter, you will always get free videos and tutorials and news about Schoolism so you can keep up to date with what's going on in the world. Click over now and I'll see you guys next time.